Hi guys, it's Sunday night and welcome to the APAD show. Now tonight, we've got a bit of a, uh, a special one for you. We've got a legend of the Irish poker scene, Fintan Gavin, uh, here with us. Lee, Lee, c- can you tell us anything about Fintan Gavin? Has anybody heard of Fintan Gavin? Well, if, you, if you've not heard about Fintan Gavin in the last, uh, I don't know, 20-odd years of, of poker, I don't know where on earth you've been. Yeah, uh, absolute Irish poker legend. Uh, I guess he's a, he's a promoter, an organiser, but more importantly, he's a poker player through and through with uh, you know, live earnings of over $1.5 million. Wow. Well, welcome to the show, Fintan Gavin. Sweet. Thank you so much. And uh, that was some introduction. Thank you very much, guys. I'm absolutely delighted to be here. Well, Fintan, we fly by the seat of our pants here. So uh, very little gets prepared, but somehow we tend to get to the end of the night. And I'm sure that's something that you're familiar with. Being a, an Irish man as myself, you don't want to, you know, get too far in advance of yourself in terms of preparations. Would that be fair to say? Absolutely. One step at a time and baby steps for me, please. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, listen, we're going to learn a lot about Fintan uh, tonight. But before we do so, Lee, what are the guys playing tonight? Bit of a big one tonight, right? Yeah, so it's uh, it's usual kind of end of the month thing. So obviously we've had leaderboard ladders running all week, which is our our, um, our weekly leaderboards. Uh, that is on week thirty nine of that. So the four tournaments that are being going on tonight will uh, will add to the points of that, obviously. But it's the end of the month, so we've got the two championship events: No Limit Hold'em and PLO Championship fifty five dollar buy in uh, tournaments. They're two dayers, so we won't get the uh, the, the final leaderboards up until tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow night going before we get a conclusion we'll, uh, on that. We'll but let me... Uh, obviously, I'm going to guess that's through. Finton's volume on his laptop. Yeah. Would that be yeah. right? Just no sorted. No sorted. Yeah. <laughs> How are you guys? Yeah, that's all right. That's all, that's all good. So, um, so yeah, already finished uh, tonight. Started at five o'clock was the Sunday deep stack. Uh, that had 72 runners in that. And uh, Ilarezi uh, Najafi from um, Canada. I probably absolutely just... Oh, you definitely murdered that. that. Murdered it. Absolutely murdered that name. Uh, 100%. But he uh, he beat Dimitri Kukas from uh, Moldova heads up with Patrick Arthurs from the UK in, in third place. So for some reason tonight, I don't know whether it's the, uh, it's the clocks changing over in either the UK... UK or Europe or something. But anyway, the uh, what's normally a seven o'clock and an eight o'clock start has turned out to be an eight o'clock and a nine o'clock start tonight. So uh, that'll be the same for tomorrow for those of you lucky enough to make it through to the day two. But we'll worry about that uh, uh, later on. So the No Limit Hold'em tonight, uh, $5,000 guarantee. We were literally $5 off that guarantee. So Sweet. well done to everybody. Nice. 100, 101 runners in that. We've got 52 remaining and we'll be paying the top 17. Uh, we'll only be bringing 16 back uh, for day two. So that's no problem, Des. Everyone's going to be in the money for a day tour, which is always a nice way to, to be. The the PLO, well, there's still actually late registration open um, uh, in that one. If you want to get into that, $4,000 guarantee in that. Currently got 65 runners, so not a million miles off the uh, off the guarantee in that. A certain uh, young Mr. Paul Haycock is currently chip leader in that yeah. one. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that one. And as always, on a Sunday night, uh, started at nine o'clock, uh, registration is now closed for this one. Unfortunately, it's the Sunday Turbo Deep, uh, deep uh, Turbo Knockout, should I say? Uh, Five hundred dollar guarantee, but we've smashed that. Seven hundred and thirty dollars in the prize pool. Top thirteen being paid, and there's a certain Dean Pearson currently chipping oh, nice. in that one. So, uh, yeah, all to play for. Fantastic, brilliantly. Thank you very much for that, Finton. Do you do you play on a Sunday night? Is that part of your normal weekly schedule? I mean, we know you as an organizer, but you're, you, I mean, as a player, yeah. of course. Yeah, no, it wouldn't really be. Um, it wouldn't really be part of my routine now playing online. Yeah. Um, I took I took to online again. I've been playing online since like, oh three oh four. I I started actually early here, probably probably oh one oh two. I started on PokerRoom.com. Shit. I don't know if you remember that site. That must have been like a three and a half three inch, months. a three and a half inch floppy disk drive with a, an executable on it, something like that in two thousand and one. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was no, there was no real money when I started. It was like it was just play money, and it was limit hold'em only, and I absolutely loved it. And it was sit and goes only. Don't ask me. I mean, don't ask me how 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 I did enjoy it so much, but I absolutely loved it. That's that's how I started playing online. And yeah, I've been playing online for twenty years, uh, but I wouldn't be really part of a, you know. A regular schedule of my week, you know, to play online. But I tell you, I did, I did take to it during the first lockdown, big yeah. time. I, you know, it just, uh, I mean, it was just so good. I just couldn't stop, you know. And, yeah. Uh, 
We had a lot of players, Vinton. A lot of players came back during that first period. And, uh, you know, you could see it in the numbers. I mean, everybody's numbers were way up, which is great to see. A lot of lads and ladies, uh, you know, came back and they were simply sort of saying, well, I'm stuck at home. And, uh, you know, I've suddenly refound a bit of, a bit of love for uh, poker. Quite a few of them have stuck around. A lot, of course, have gone by the wayside again. A lot of our players are live players. They particularly, you know, are, are waiting for live to come back in a big way. Um, would you say, you know, over that period of time, are you predominantly a live player? Is that where you get most enjoyment out of the game? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, um, that's definitely my, my passion would be live poker, 100%. Um, even though I started playing Hold'em, or should I say limit Hold'em online first? Yeah. Uh, but when I when I I mean when I when I went to Real Money then, and I remember playing uh, online one night, and I got in a conversation with a guy, and he asked me, did I ever go to a tournament in uh, in Dublin? And he mentioned a casino in Dublin, and yeah. I was like, what the hell? Play? What do you mean? You can actually play a tournament live? I just couldn't <laughs> believe it. Do you know? And no. he said, Yeah, it was the Murrayan in Dublin. He says, Did you he this guy is in Northern Ireland? So then I rang the Murrayan and I ended up going in. This is like I'd say 2003. And I just couldn't believe that this was actually a reality that you could go into a bricks and mortar room and play live poker in Ireland. It was it was incredible. And when I walked in there that first night, I just says, Wow, okay. I'm go- I'm go- I like not only am I gonna play these live games i'm going to host one that was that was that was my ambition like you know? that's the dream of course a lot of legends of irish poker came out of the murian uh the, the stairs in there i mean it's a bit of a legendary place you've got donica you've got andy black a lot of sort of players back then in particular i think we were we were ahead of a lot of the rest of europe in terms of you know evolved hold'em tournaments and stuff like that finton um but my my, 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 my yeah. yeah my next question for you would be uh yeah. you know as a as a, as a youngster uh, in Ireland, I, and I was born in Mayo, was brought up in Mayo right next to where you are in Galway. Um, my parents used to play a lot of 25. They would play pretty competitively in the pubs and stuff like that. That's where I think I got the bug for card games and, and poker and stuff like that. How about yourself? Where did you, where did yeah, you get into absolutely. it? I totally relate to what you're saying there, guys. Um, our family, um, I know my mum and dad met at a card game. So, so that would kind of give you an idea, like uh, 25, my mum's from Roscommon, like my dad from Mayo. So the West of Ireland, uh, as you know yourself, was just absolutely steeped in that game, 25. And yeah. we were brought up in that game as uh, as kids, you know. But, uh, you know, I remember we used to play, like we did play straight draw. We did play a bit of stud and that, like, you know. Uh, I remember my older brother, when I was very young, I mean, I'm talking when I was like nine or 10 and my older brother used to bring the youngsters in the neighborhood around for a game and he'd be hustling them for like their pennies and fivepence. And <laughs> I remember sitting beside my brother watching, trying to replicate what he could do. And I actually remember my pulling my first bluff. And that was me then. That was me. Absolutely. <laughs> that was me hooked. So, you know. Well, uh, uh, Lee, you, uh, I don't know if you identify with this, but as a 14 year old, uh, and we would play this game 25 at home. You, you might not be familiar with this. It's certainly not the first time I've mentioned it on the show. Great little game. Um, but, uh, you know, I used to, I used to beg my mom and dad, I used to take me to the pub. I mean, I'm, you know, I can play this game. I'd love to play competitively. And they say, no, you can't come to us because if you play one card wrong, it affects the rest of the game for everybody. If you just play one card out of position, these lads are so serious that they'll basically not let go of you for, for making a mistake. So uh, I, I wasn't allowed to play yeah, the absolutely. game live. It, yeah, it's a bit like, um, a little bit like playing blackjack, you know, you know, yeah, if there's a good four point. or five boxes being played and someone plays kind of, plays wrong <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> that's and, right and the yeah. reactions are pretty similar oh as well. shit you've you just know, taken like, my card you, that's the card i should have got yeah and, and you've yeah, taken yeah, it yeah, 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 it goes you, get, like that. you get absolutely very... bastard but but yeah no 25 i don't know do you remember the full tilt goi festival back in 2013 where yeah we actually built a, a poker village like and we put on like I remember that uh yeah, yeah we put on a two-week festival but we actually put 25 in the schedule with a 10k guarantee legend so so i mean it was but it was brilliant absolutely brilliant yeah i have yet to meet somebody who knows what the hell i'm talking about when i say 
25 as a game. But there you go. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we should do well, that. I, well, I right. will. I will jump. Yeah. I will jump in to say just quickly, uh, you've got 60 seconds left if you want to register for the main, uh, the, the No oh, Limit Holder main event tonight. We've uh, just got through the uh, through the guarantee. So there's 105 runners at the moment. If you want to quickly sneak in for $55 and uh, try and be a part of it and pick up APAP medals this month, you, uh, your timer is ticking down. Fantastic. There, there you go. There's a bit of selling. We do a bit of selling here as well, Fintan. I, I have just to say, that. That's Lee, is, cool, Lee is the man. Lee. He's he's yeah. he's not on a commission, but you wouldn't know it, honestly. Nobody's on a commission in this business. But uh, well, it's, it's great to get the information out there. That's really and you, good. You've got to do it. Sometimes it's just about the awareness, yeah, right? People aren't aware. Uh, I tell you who should be on a commission, and that is one Frank Bailey. Now, Frank is out there. He said, welcome to the APAT show, Fintan. Frank put us in touch with you. Hence, that's why you're on tonight. We're we're absolutely delighted for that. Frank's been a, a stalwart, loyal member of APAT almost from the very beginning. And I used to be with Sky Poker, and Frank was a stalwart member of the, the Sky Poker sort of community way back in, crikey, 2008, 2009, 2010. So uh, Frank and I go back uh, quite a long way. Uh, now, Frank uh, has played for Ireland in our amateur team events many, many times. But I'm going to go back to 2008. And unfortunately, I don't have the uh, the video for this. Um, when Ireland won our first major team event, it was a European amateur poker championship. It was played down in Brighton. And uh, captain in Ireland that day, in fact, over that weekend, was one Len Collin. Uh, a Westbourne man who I, I know you know, right, Len? I was just going to say, was that Len, Len and that? I think my fr friend Pat O'Callaghan. Yeah, Pat was there. As well. Pat, oh, Pat yeah. was very, very much there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure how much yeah. of it he'll remember, but he was there. Yeah. I, th yeah. I think he won the player of the series. I think he got more points did, than almost yes. anybody yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. But it was an awesome yeah. weekend. Lee, if I'm not mistaken, you were captain in Wales or you were part, certainly part of the Welsh team, right? I was part of the Welsh team, yeah, part of the Welsh team that weekend, yeah. We have phenomenal fun with those events. And somewhat 16 years later, we're still doing them. And uh, I mean, we, yeah. we run the World Championship of Amateur Poker. I don't know if you've come across that, the WCOAP. I, uh, I definitely have come across oh, it a few it, times. I, I, I don't really know much about it, but it, it looks like it, it looks like it's well organized and you're all over kind of you. You run it throughout the world. Is that correct? Yeah, we do. I mean, the last live one was in Prague. And, uh, you know, you're, you're talking 30 to 33 bracelet events, very much like a mini World Series of Poker. So eight games, stud, Chinese, uh, we have cash events. It's like and everybody yeah. gets bracelets or medals. So you get the honor, you get your national anthem played. We did our oh, most recent one on party yeah. poker. It's really, really good. And, uh, you know, what we find is that we have a, a ton of lads like Frank, who, for example, are not interested in putting all of their money into poker, but they're very passionate about it. They love the game. You'll be very familiar with this story, right? And and I want to come back to Irish poker and the, what you're doing with the Irish poker tour at the moment. Um, but, you know, lads will travel from all over the world, almost, to play in these events, despite the fact that the buy-ins are very, very small. They're playing more for the honor and the prestige and the community and the camaraderie and all of that good stuff, which I think is a particularly Irish sort of trait, uh, as opposed to, you know, it's a 300k guaranteed event and I might, you know, I might cash top 10 or whatever and actually make a very decent pay. Um, so, yeah, we, we get a tremendous amount of loyalty like that. W when you look at um, you, what you've done with Irish poker, particularly from an organizational point of view over the years, you know, what stands out to you as being something that you're really proud of? Yeah, well, actually, one of the most standout events that we hosted was back in 2005 which was a team event. And to this day, it's still talked about. We had a team from every county in Ireland. It was like 10 players per team, all 32 counties. And uh, it was just absolutely incredible. We played over a weekend in Dublin. And just exactly the like what you're saying there, Des, about people just playing for the love of it. That's what it was like. Every yeah. single person there, like there was a common kind of, uh, you know, connection between everyone. Everyone was just there for poker and loved it. And I think we've lost that over the years. Like I certainly have anyway. And a lot of the festivals I've traveled to, a lot of the kind of card rooms and casinos I've gone to, you kind of get the feel it's like, you know, there's these re-entries and yeah, the guarantees are brilliant and they're 
But I mean, where does it end? Where does it stop? You know, uh, like maybe it has attracted like people who are just kind of making a living. They're there for the money. And like the people who are just playing for passion, that kind of they've been overlooked a little bit. That's yeah. that's the way I see, I see it for the last few years. Yeah, I think that's a, uh, that's a very fair call. I mean, as the buy-ins have gone up and the guarantees have gone up and, you know, certainly the the operators want to see the recreational players, but it feels largely like they want to see them to, you know, feed those big prize pools online or those big satellite events online to push players to, you know, really professional standard events. Um, we've steered clear of that. Uh, certainly at APAP, we've only ever run uh, freeze-out events. So they're serious, they're competitive. The players are good. Yeah. But yeah. we know them, you know, we'll know these players, we'll welcome I, them. I didn't know that. That's a really good, that's that's huge, I think, the what you're saying there about freeze-out events. One of the things, um, we, we've just relaunched the Irish Poker Tour there. Yeah. And uh, one of the things, there was a couple of elements. The main, the main element was is be player-friendly, like, you know. And it's easy to just say, oh, it's going to be player-friendly, but we actually broke down what we you know, what we felt would make it player friendly. And that is definitely one of the uh, the key key attributes you need, I think, is is introducing freeze outs. And uh, that's what we did. Now, we did the main event as a flight freeze out. So you could play like yeah. multiple flights, but every flight was a free is, is a freeze out like, you know, and uh, the late registration, we felt like, I mean, I don't know about you, but I think it's absolutely crazy registering for a tournament like a day later you know yeah. what i mean it's not so I you mean, could buy into day two of the main event that's the question yeah i, I would you completely know? agree i mean the world series of poker main event you were able to buy in for day two this year uh no uh, you know perhaps because of the covid thing and the international travel but that was a first mm. i mean i'd like to see that go away uh you know for us it was it was very much uh, you know predominantly about we want the players to take the events seriously uh, we're, you know, we're awarding titles and we've done that consistently. We've awarded the same titles for 16 years. So over that period of time, they really create some value and the players really want to win them. Um, but if you have the advantage of being able to flick in five buy-ins, it just, it affects the play. So if you're a good player, but you're working on a tight bankroll, it's hard to play against a player who's prepared to, you know, take really tight edges against you and stuff like that. Um, so we stuck consistently to it. And it's it's interesting to see that actually the market seems to be, you know, if you put your ear down there, it seems to be sort of coming back to us a little bit. There's a lot yeah. more sort of let's just wind yeah. this back in a bit again. But we were uh, well, we were never about the guarantees, Fenton. Yeah. So, you know, we, we never had the pressure of sort of saying it's 50K guaranteed or it's 100K okay. guaranteed which of course made it easier for us to stick to our guns on freeze outs. But what, what have you been able to do with the Irish poker tour? So you're working with Paddy power. You, you've got a great sponsor yeah. there. Yeah. What, what can you we, do? We to? Have some, we have some, uh, we have some friends there in Paddy power. And uh, just after like just an initial kind of chats or whatever, it, it turns out that they're were the way they were, the way they're going and the way we're going was pretty similar, you know, we we just want like we we just want the fun element. That's the number one thing really that we want to bring when we run a tournament. That it's fun and people enjoy it. And uh, a couple of baseline things was the limited um, limited late entry. Uh, you know, freeze outs, a cap with it, with re entries. We've the events we do have as re entries. There's a cap. It's capped at one re entry. Like you know. Yeah. And added money for the players that there's added money for the players like you know too often you hear about like big brands sponsoring events or whatever and then the player turns up but there's not really anything there for the player like you know yeah you know i mean it's great for the operator or whatever to get a partner to help them pay the bills or whatever but some of that has to trickle down to the players and uh we that was that was key for for the deal we did with paddy power and they've added a ton of money, uh, live and online for 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 anyone that participates in the in in the tour. Like you know, so yeah. Look, basically the main thing is the um, the fun element, and we've uh, reintroduced a team event for the Galway. The Galway is twenty seventh to the thirtieth of January, and there is a team event with uh, 
sizable guarantee, 50,000 guaranteed in the team event with 5K added. Yeah, So fantastic. there's a 5K bonus, which is huge considering it's only 250 per player buy-in, you know? Wow, that's awesome. And uh, it's going to be very, very popular, I've no doubt. Now, your 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 tour, um, Finton, is very regionally based, right? So obviously you're going to have events in Dublin, but you're also, you're in the West, you're in the South. What is the general standard of card rooms like across Ireland in comparison with, for example, Dublin, where maybe people are more experienced? Are you bringing the same dealer pool to all of these games, just holding them in <laughs> clubs or hotels? That's... What's the plan? Sorry, that's quite funny what you said there, Des. <laughs> Maybe that misinterpreted you. Did you say that the players in Dublin are more experienced than the players in the? Uh, no, no, no. I, 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 I thought that? maybe the. I thought maybe the venues were so. Uh, but I, I mean, joke. yeah, yeah, yeah. Money wine, you. I mean, well, I'm, look, I'm still we, crying about the Fitzwilliam going. To be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. There's a big <laughs> lack of venues in Ireland. I mean, a huge lack. We 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 tend to um, we tend to go to hotels. You know, that's yeah. that's where most of our events are because our numbers are pretty good. Like, you know, we're, we're pretty impressed with the, the turnouts of late. Like, you know, like the last few games, like they say, just the regional tour stops, which would be just kind of localized events. And we're hitting like, say, the guarantee is 10,000. We're tripling the guarantee. It's wow, like 30,000. Nice. Yeah. So. So, yeah, it's going really well. Uh, so hotels. Yeah, we go mainly to hotels, but we do work. With card rooms like well known card rooms throughout Ireland, like the Eglinton being being one of them and uh Macau and Cork. Um yeah, so so yeah, and we're looking we're looking to like we we'll we'll run an event anywhere where people want us, uh there's a demand, uh we'll we will run an event there. But the idea is basically just like we bring the we bring the event to the players type yeah, thing. Makes sense. So, you know, it's easy access, like you know. And tell me, um, Finton, I mean, that's quite an operational challenge. That's an operational challenge we don't face. For example, we, we tend to go to casinos. Everything is there for us. Um, yeah. how, how do you organize your dealers? And is that a is that a challenge in Ireland or is there yeah. a pretty good pool there? Yeah, it is. It is a big challenge. It's 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 tough. Like it's so, so, so much easier. Like some of the some of the arrangements we have with a casino, you mean, you just walk in, it's all there. They've done it before. They just scale up a little bit. Or whatever for the event and it's very straightforward you know but uh yeah when you go like to uh you know when you go to a private hire venue like basically you just have a room basically and you have to you know what i mean supply everything and uh, and staff like if you go to like a country area there's no there's no industry like there there's no tradition of group years of dealers or anything like that so you have to bring the you have to bring the staff with you and yeah it is a challenge but we've been doing this for like the goods of 20 years, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you guys yeah. know what you're doing. Well, yeah, well, it's not so much we know what we're doing, but we've made all the mistakes there is to make. So, <laughs> been there, done that. Um, listen, there's a bunch of you guys out there watching in. So, if you've got a question for Finton, just put it in the chat box and we will ask him. But I can say Paul Haycock is there. You mentioned him earlier. Uh, Lee Paul is there. Greg Mawson is there as well. Tris Chaplin is watching in with us. Frank, as we mentioned, is there as well. Peter Wigglesworth is there. Ian Eyre is there. Simon Lawler. Uh, Steve Forty says, Hi, show. I guess that's to all of us. Hi, show that sort of just get straight to it. Uh, uh, Steve says, does Des almost know Andy Black? Would be great if Des got Andy Black on the show. We'll come back. <laughs> we'll come back to that. Uh, Eddie and Yasko is there. Uh, Pete says, welcome, Finton. Uh, remember you commentating. We haven't talked about your commentating at all. So we've got to come back to that as well. But Pete says, welcome, Finton. Remember you commentating on IPO 2019 with Phil the Tower. So Phil Heald, of course, a legend of the game. Watched many of your games on TV. Very entertaining and passionate about the game. Quite right. Can't argue with that. Uh, Holdy Foldy says, prefer freeze out. Part of why I love APAT. So that's Michelle, of course. Uh, Rob Reynolds says, the freeze out structure is great. Who wants to bug, uh, bust a big name and see him back at your table 10 minutes later with a chip on his shoulder? You can't argue with that either. Uh, Steve goes on to say, uh, the party poker update is really bad. Yeah, I've heard that, Steve. And to be honest, you, you might be right. It's going to take a little bit of getting used to. Uh, but let's talk about it in a week or two's time when we've had that chance to get that initial sort of view uh, out of the way. Uh, Pete says six of us are booked for the IPT poker finals in Galway end of Jan. Can you give us an update on the current state of play for poker in Ireland? Well, that's a lovely segue into COVID, isn't it? Um, how challenging has that been for you 
as an organizer, uh, Finton, and do you think is Galway going to go ahead as planned? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 huge. But I've just first of all, off the bat, I have no inside information. Like, I really, you know, I have no kind of connection to Neffet or politicians or Atten. Yeah, so I, yeah, I mean, yeah. I absolutely have no inside track. But, um, yeah, basically, Ireland has been through a, a, a lockdown pretty much like no other country. It's been, like, pretty harsh, the the restrictions, like, you know, since since forever, you know? Um doesn't seem to doesn't seem to benefit like I I mean I'm not sure they, they began I mean it's crazy really they started opening things up in October the end of October and we started the live tour then and we we've got in like four or five really good games since and now they've just just in like literally in the last couple of days I've introduced more new restrictions and so we've kind of paused the tour. The restrictions are just for like uh, they're for four weeks. They're till the January the 9th. So four or five weeks for the restrictions. And then the restrictions are being lifted on January the 9th. So it looks it's not great for the tour because we have to shuffle things around. Um, we have to move dates. It's it's a bit of a nightmare. But for the festival final in Galway, which is 27th of January uh, to the 30th, it looks it looks good like. The other thing that gives us a little bit of assurance is they introduced a new bank holiday in Ireland. It was for basically a kind of thank you to the frontline workers and just to kind of give a a day a day celebration for everyone after the kind of two years of of living with the pandemic or whatever. And it's it just by coincidence they've chosen that weekend the last weekend in January as the bank holiday. So it's kind of hardly, it's it's highly unlikely to see them having restrictions yeah. then. But, yeah. but who knows? Again, I don't know. But so at the moment, yeah, every, everything's 100% for Galway. Like, you know, it's yeah. just a couple of our tour stops are rescheduled. So I yeah. hope that helps. No, but I mean, it makes feel sense. Free, feel, feel free to reach out to me anytime. I'm very contactable. Like uh, my number is out there everywhere. Like, you know. So yep. if you want it, best way is WhatsApp me because if we're watching Coronation Street or something, I'm not allowed to answer the phone, you know, but I can <laughs> always send a message back and watch WhatsApp. <laughs> well, feel free, Fintan, if you want to, feel free to add either your number, your email or your Facebook link to your page so people can direct message you into the chat box, right? If you want to do that, absolutely yeah, you can true, do that. True, yeah. I also have Fintan's number. So if anybody needs to get in touch, yeah, no problem. feel free to no drop problem. me a, a, a message also. Um, now, the thing about Andy Black, right? Andy Black uh, is a bit of a running uh, joke on this show because uh, we had uh, a great session lined up with uh, your old mate, Patrick Nally, who I've known for a very long time myself. And Andy, uh, Patrick was going to do the first uh, hour to talk about match poker and, and you know, all sorts of things. We talked to him about his career in sports marketing. It was a fantastic show. Uh, then Andy was to come on at 11 for the second hour. Uh, so we got Andy on and he said, uh, I'm, I'm in the middle of three tournaments on stars. It's the, this, yeah. S, it's the yeah. S Coupe or whatever the hell it was. He yeah. says, I'm going, I'm going deep in three of them. Is there, is there, is, and I said, look, for 10% Andy, right? You go ahead and play your poker. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not a problem. We'll sort it out another time. And then I got I a text he message. Went and won one of them. <laughs> well, he sent me a text message at three o'clock in the morning. Oh, he fucking won the tournament. 80 was, grand or whatever it was. Yeah, I, I said, this. eight grand for APAD. Brilliant. Um, no, so uh, we we haven't got Andy back on since, although I've, talk, uh, you know, I've t- spoken to Andy quite a few times. A- interesting guy. What can you tell us about Andy Black? Well, we... That's funny because uh, Pat, Patrick Nally, who is like the president of the Federation of Match Poker. That's right. We, yeah. Like we, we've we participated, myself and Andy, we've put a team together over a few years, like maybe three or four, maybe more, maybe four or five events. We, we've attended like all over, like London, Ukraine, uh, Ireland, whatever. And they're just absolutely brilliant crack. I mean, they really are great fun. Uh, there's no prize money. Uh, but the crack we used to have with Andy, because we had other big names on the team, like Chris Dowling or whatever, and a few others. like. But it, Andy, if Andy has to be, uh, Andy's the alpha male, you know what I mean? He's, 
<laughs> he has to, you know what I mean, tell everyone what to do, you know. But Chris, um, Chris didn't like it so much, you know. And there was a <laughs> running joke for every tournament we went to, like, you know, where Andy be giving lectures to Chris about how to play hands and etc. And Chris just trying to, you know, give Andy lectures back. And it was just great. The banter was absolutely brilliant. But it turned out one of these tournaments we went to, uh, Andy was just having a nightmare of, of a, like, he was like, he was actually in the bottom out of like 120 players or something crazy. He was in the bottom two or three, which is pretty hard to do because the field wouldn't be that strong. Yeah. But he was just having a nightmare. He had a, like, things just weren't going well. But he was just incredible. But like, Chris just was slagging him off, saying, you know, you're telling us how to play and giving us strat advice. And like, look at the look at this your position on the board. <laughs> but it was unbelievable. Like he came back right up. Like he actually got up the board, up the leaderboard, like right back into it. Now, I tell you one thing about Andy, right? Of all of all the players, and I know Andy for quite a while. I had the privilege of traveling with him to different events or whatever, like you know. But he is some class player. I tell you that. Like he's, I put him up there. In the top, I put him in the top fifty in the world at any stage, and you know how things change every three, yeah. four years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's new strategy. There's, you know what I mean. The things, things move around. Andy adapts every time. Yeah. He is top quality. But you know what happened in that tournament? We all were called into the hall at the very end of the weekend or whatever. And uh, out of all the players, right, I was, I was the leader for ages, and I ended up coming third. OK, I was pretty disappointed with that. Then we had Clicky Clark, Patrick Clark, Ireland again. Great he player. came second. And who came first? Not Andy Black. Andy Black. Wow. He came right back and it was the player of the tournament. Yeah. It was incredible. It's insane. And that was a very skill based format, right? I mean, that's the thing about match poker. It's quite skill based. Skill based players will always outdo less skill based players because you're, you're 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 making similar decisions on on different tables, as it were. Um, yeah. I, I had the pleasure of uh, being uh, at the 2005 World Series of Poker final table where Andy, of course, was chip leader with five to go. And uh, it fell apart a little bit then, um, but was just struck by both uh, his confidence and, you know, the way he, I mean, there's a guy that fills the room, right? He's a very intelligent guy, but he, he fills the room with a bit of an aura. And there were some big names around there, but uh, he was that close to have having you know just what would have been a mega mega score and of course the story with him you know of finding monkhood and 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 what have you for a period of time is just super interesting uh so we will have to get andy back yeah. we do have there's his biggest fan. yeah there's a bit of a background to that uh Des. andy andy was if you go back like to 97 you know eight yeah. years before that or whatever he was very dominant in the main event. It was down to like two tables That's right. That's or right. whatever. And it was Stu Unger, I think, yeah. who knocked him out in the end. He got unlucky in a massive hand, you know. But he was totally in the zone, like, for that event. And it looked like it was his day. That was 97. And he got went bust that yeah. tournament. And uh, then he went off and did other things. I know he, yeah. he, he went got into a monastery and all that. But and then two thousand, I was there. I was there with him in oh five, like that time. But you don't. You see a guy, and you might think, "Oh wow, he's just burst on the scene, or he's having a lucky run, or whatever." Very often, it's not the case. There's yeah. so much, you know what I mean, in the background that has brought him to that moment, you know. Yeah. And again, he was. I think he was really unlucky, as you say, in oh five. He got. I mean, he was. He'd half the chips yeah. at one stage, five handed. Yeah. And anyway. uh, he had an edge. He definitely had an edge on that table. But uh, that's poker, right? You can't guarantee your results. You can only play your cards as they uh, as they come. And he was in a, a documentary. I think it must have been in '98, uh, probably the year after that '97 run. I think yeah. it was called Poker Kings from memory. And I remember there were a few British yeah. players in the Gary Bush and you know a few of the lads that were well known back then. Uh, you know uh, Steve Forty, if you're out there, my friend, try and find that one. That was absolutely yeah. Brilliant. That was a good one. I think is that the one with Mike McGee? No. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, Mike yes. McGee. Yeah, that was a really good one. And Mad Marty was yeah. was was featured. Yeah, that <laughs> I remember that. It was pretty good. But yeah, no, Andy, Andy's a, Andy's Andy's a, in my opinion, 
Uh, like he's one of the best. Uh, I mean, he gets a lot of slagging, probably doesn't get as respected as much as he should in Ireland, you know, but that's pretty much standard, I think, for 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 big players. There's there's all kinds of there's all you know, there's all kinds of things uh, yeah. you know, in yeah, yeah. poker yeah, communities going on. But yeah, no, he's quality act, he's a total quality act. Well, you know, but Vinton, a... you've 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 had your own successes at final tables in big big tournaments. I mean, you know, let's take you back to 2008 and, and the EPT at Barcelona. Uh, second place finish for over a million dollars. I mean, how did you get into that <laughs> tournament in the first place? And, and yeah, how that was, did that? You know, that how did it all great, happen? That was a great tournament. That was uh, I I qualified for a hundred dollars. Sorry, two hundred dollars online it was a hundred was a hundred uh, re entry, and I remember the the event well because of the price the payout. That, that was an EPT, and back then that EPT was AK buy-in. And uh, it was a package worth $16,000. And then, like, second place was, like, $500 or something like that. Like, do you know what I mean? It was only <laughs> – the, the satellite just basically collected the 16 and 16K, and there was 500 left over. So it was the 16K first, $500 for second. Very much winner takes all. Yeah. yeah. And I remember – No like, deals. Just, <laughs> absolutely dogging the guy in the in the heads up in, in the satellite but yeah i got it went over um at the time i had just opened a casino in in galway and uh i was playing a lot then i was playing a lot of live poker like quite a lot i was playing every single night i was playing live poker and i was just starting to change my game like starting to you know what i mean think about my game a bit more like Is that know? the eglinton yeah? yeah yeah the eglinton yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we had good, like, we good, we, there was, like, good players around me, like, you know, which, like, a few of my friends, like, Derek Murray and Jude Ainsworth, I'm sure you remember him as a yeah, yeah. Stars pro, and, big, like, big there, was, there was player. several, Pat O'Callaghan, there was, there was several decent uh, players in Galway, like, like, really decent, like, you know, so the standard, like, was pretty good, like, you know, and, like, yeah, uh, like, I remember going off to that tournament, uh, and I remember, like, trying to sell some of my action, and, like none of the lads were interested whatsoever. <laughs> like you know what I mean? They were like, "Good luck, fit, no chance." Like you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, no, I went. My game was my game was starting to improve, and uh, I I I really I applied myself. One of the things I do, that does strike me from back that that tournament, whether it made a difference or not, I don't know. I think it did. Was that none of my mates were with me? I qualified, but no one else really. I I was with. Like I traveled by myself. And I remember, like, I was in the big fancy arts hotel or whatever. But I was thinking every every day, I was thinking to myself, I don't want to get knocked out because I have nothing to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I really applied myself, you know. And then you walking just, around. It just every day just went on, and yeah, no, I really, really felt I uh, I played well, got in the got in the game, got in the zone, and it was an amazing prize pool. It was really sick prize pool. It was kind of weird. Because it was like I had a hundred percent of myself, and I actually we did a deal. We chopped it three way, but I got most of the money. Like it was like it was it was kind of weird. Some of my mates flew out then for the final table, and uh, it was kind of funny. They just got drunk, like, and we were negotiating <laughs> the chop, like you know, and like yeah. there was well, you had um, so you had a you had a um, a Jason Mercier on that final table. Yeah. Like, whatever happened? Whatever happened to him? Did he ever? Yeah. You know, did he ever go on and make a <laughs> career or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was some really, there was some really top. There was David Katai. I'm sure you know David Katai mm. from France. And then there was uh, Sebastian Ruthenberg, who's a World Series bracelet winner. I think he's a multiple bracelet winner. But he's gone off the scene now. He's a, he opened a big fancy restaurant for himself. He was big into food, you know. But like these guys, when we were negotiating the chop, I, I, these all these guys had teams. Like they had like literally teams of people and the calculators, and there was discussions and. Uh, I, I I know they didn't have a hundred percent of themselves. They were like, you know what I mean. So yeah, yeah. But yeah. Anyway, and then I was like in the negotiations, and I was like turning around to my guys, and I was like, what the hell? The boys had no interest. They were just like, <laughs> you know. But one of my friends, Conor McGuire, was there, who's kind of like, you know, he'd be not a mathematician, but he'd be pretty slick with numbers, like you know. And I was saying, Connor, come here, right? This is what they're offering. What do you think? And he was like looking at me, he goes. Okay, uh, what's the prize pool again? <laughs> you know, like, 
He just had to clear what was going on. But anyway, well, I, th- I thought one of the interesting things on there. I don't know whether how much you remember about you know the kind of the the the, the top finishes in that. But there was a there's a guy that finished fifteenth um, in that event, and it was his second ever um, live cash on the Hendon Mob. Uh, do you know know who I'm I'm thinking of? No. I definitely would know him if he finished fifteenth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, he's gone on to uh, to to win thirty seven point seven million. Oh, I know exactly million. who you're talking about because he was on my table, and that was Stephen Stephen Chid- yeah, from D. Yeah, Stephen yeah. Chidwick. Yeah, uh, it was his second second Steve, ever yeah. yeah second ever live cash. Yeah, in that tournament. well, he was yep. he was legendary. I remember I knew him back on that table. Like I knew who he was. He was legendary because of the multiple uh packages he had won he was just winning everything online back then i'm assuming he was winning online because his, his actual cash his first cash was earlier on in that year at the pca so i'm assuming he was just winning winning packages to things yeah, yeah. and just getting into his live poker maybe yeah, yeah no he i i knew I, I mean everyone knew him steve, i think it was steve for stevie 444 i think was his name online he's from you know and then deal in brackets yeah but yeah he doubled me up it was great uh, sevens <laughs> versus two overs or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> he got me he's, going. He, yeah. he's, he's, uh, his live game's got pretty good since, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. These guys, they, I mean, they just, they, 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 I mean, they're obviously naturally talented, but they've yeah. put in, they've put in the work and, you know, he's, st- I mean, pe- some people are just meant to do certain things, you know, <clears throat> like Trains in Washington is, he's born to act. Do you know what I mean? Messi's born to play football. Stevie's born to play poker. Yeah. You know I, mean? <laughs> I tell you, it was uh, amazing given that a lot of his uh, prize money has come from, you know, a very, very super high roller events, right? Small fields, yeah. but super high roller buy-ins. Uh, it was very impressive to see him go as deep as he did in the main event this this year. What he, he, he must have finished in the top 20, 25 players and he went very, very deep. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, yeah. Good player. Listen, uh, let's have a look at the chat box. So uh, we have been joined by a few uh, newbies. Gary Young is there. Dave Madden is there. Uh, Steve uh, says, well, we're back to Andy Black, right? Uh, so Andy played with Stu Unger. We really want to know about Andy being on the final table with Stu. Uh, Tony Ross has joined. Rob Reynolds, uh, so we're talking about that uh, documentary, The Million Dollar Deal. Uh, said it was classic. Uh, and Mad Marty, yeah, that's uh, that's the one. Uh, Rob says it's on YouTube. Also had the devil fish in it. Uh, Tomo is out there. Ian Thompson, Jason Kemp is there. Uh, Rob said, uh, what does he say here? Let's have a look. What did study look like back when you were playing early Galway days, Fenton? Or, or was it mostly trial and error? So tons of study resources available today. I mean, how did you, how yeah, did you develop was, was your game back then? Like we, we, we kind of, we kind of booked against that. Like, you know, um, I I, th- I think we were a little bit ahead in Galway because we were the first to do kind of live tournaments outside casinos. You know, we started running tournaments in 04, like, you know, like good structured tournaments, like, you know, and there was nowhere else in Ireland doing that, you know. Uh, so I think we had a little bit of a head start and we started having big results. Like, so, yeah. like a lot of the guys from Galway were, were having like more, re- better results than, you know, Per population, like you know, and uh, there was no, there was, there was no, there was no strategy advice. We didn't ever share information, very little, you know. Wow. We we didn't share at all. It was like you know, and yep. like then we see all seen these. Uh, was really the UK lads who started coming out, you know, and you could see that they were they they traveled together to tournaments, and you just know that like you know, they were a little bit more serious. They upped their game, like, and they were sharing hand histories and talking about the game and talking about hands where we were more like, uh, we love traveling, obviously, but we were more like having the crack and going to yeah. the pub yeah, and yeah. forget about the poker. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. If you got yeah. busted out, you got slagged off. Do you know what I mean? And probably that was kind of not our downfall, but probably we missed, we missed a step there big time. I think, you know, did uh, anybody stand out to you back then? So, you know, maybe if we're talking about the UK players being a bit more serious, did anybody stand out to you as somebody who maybe made you think, you know, that that's a very decent player there and, uh, you know, I wonder how he's getting all of those results. Anything like that? Or 
and inspiration. Absolutely. I mean, every tournament, every like, I mean, every single tournament you'd see it. Like, I mean, every tournament, yeah. without a doubt. Because, like, when we started playing, you know, you'd sit down at a table, and like, you'd look around the table, and there might be one other guy that could play. And if there was two guys at the table that could play, I mean, you got a really bad table, you know. <laughs> I mean, we just, that's just the way it was. And we hammer crushed the game. You know what I mean? Because we just played, our our strategy was super aggressive. Do you know what I mean? That was the way we played. That's the way I played. You just, and you put your chips on the line every hand. And if someone went up against you, they knew that, you know, you're playing for stacks. Do you know what I mean? Back then, there was no such thing as a re-entry or, you know, there was no tournament the next day. This was the tournament. There was no yeah. tournament for another yeah. two months, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, to, to so make the most of it. Yeah, yeah. But then when, like, we traveled to the UK mainly or maybe to Europe, to Amsterdam or somewhere like yeah. always def- everywhere. I mean, I, the list is endless, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, always I would see some player that would just absolutely astonish me, like, and I mean astonish me, like, and go, okay, th- you know, and that's when I kind of copped on that, these guys were studying, using tools, talking together and breaking down hands. And, you know, basically the game, the game was up for guys like me, you know. <laughs> well, we're going to come back to that. OK, but uh, a couple other people in the chat box. So Sharky Gav said, well said Fonda. OK, so I'm hoping that's at you because I don't yeah. recognize that one. Uh, Paul yeah. Folan is out there saying the Westwood. He's talking about the Westwood. Westwood. Yeah, that's where we started, yeah. That's where we started. So James Gettins is out there as well. And Tomo says, nice to see an entertaining player on the show. Nice one, guys. No disrespect, Lee. So, uh, yeah. So it's just, (laughs) I think he's just dropped a knot on you. (laughs) That's Ginger, one of my friends from Galway. And he's uh, talking about the Westwood. That was, we started that in 04. And it was like, uh, it was a really, it was the biggest regular game in Ireland uh, and it was the only game outside casinos back then. And every Wednesday night, and it'd get a hundred players, and it was just absolute top quality poker. It was like, I mean, uh, uh, recently I met a very successful businessman who's like, he's he's a chain, he's a chain of famous hairdress hairdressing salons all over. A uh, very wealthy guy and top businessman. But he was saying he's his fit and he says. I remember back at the Westward Wood, and I remember rearranging my whole week, my meetings, my everything. <laughs> so I'd have the Wednesday evening off and the Thursday morning just yeah. for that game. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why wouldn't you? It's a passion. I mean, poker is a yeah. passionate sport, isn't it? So tell me, Fintan, thinking back to Barcelona and obviously hitting the heights of winning that type of cash. Uh, in 2008, which was obviously a really peak period for poker. I mean, it was four years after Moneymaker won the big one in Vegas. So it was a really, you know, peak period for poker. Um, Did you go on to play many other international tournaments? I mean, you mentioned Amsterdam, I'm assuming the Master Classics there. Um, Did you, did you fulfill your, uh, your opportunity, your ability, do you think, or, or not? What do you think? Uh, Probably not, to be honest, because, I was so involved in business and yeah. uh, I started uh, I started getting involved in my poker stars as well. I worked at poker stars pretty closely for five or six years and I was more into uh, I was into I was always into live events like that was that was my kind of real passion. Like, do you know what I mean? Is is to produce kind of standout events like, you know, and poker events specifically like, you know. So I didn't really play play as play play that much. I did the UK IPT. I did play like for like for all of the years. I played almost all of the events. Do you know what I mean? In the UK IPT, that was like these were kind of small to medium buy-ins, around five hundred euro. Great events. Yeah, to, yeah, to a thousand. I think was the big bigger ones. Like you know, and they were and it was a great like over the years. You know, particularly in that time, it's probably something that will never be kind of repeated again. But there was kind of a great uh, camaraderie. Uh, you know, you'd kind of above all these guys, like say we'd go to an event, well, there'd be a bunch of us from Galway, and we'd meet a bunch of lads from Newcastle or a bunch of lads from fucking Manchester. And, and the crack was just like everyone yeah. was there for the same purpose. 
there was never any hassle. Like, I mean, never. I can't remember ever to be, you know, hassle. Uh, just crack. And I met some really good, decent people and have some real close friends that I've met through that tour, like, you know, to this day, like, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I played most of the games I played would have been that UKIPT, you know. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I definitely uh, recognise that that sort of narrative there. A very much APAD like I mean we've had many players who played with us in the first season still playing with us today we've had births we've had deaths we've had weddings we've had you name it you know from just amongst the uh, the community it's great great to see right? as I was just looking uh because fin Finton won one of those uh up in Edinburgh uh oh, back in brilliant. 2011 and I was again just looking at his final table uh there's an a patter on his final table uh, 2011 in, in Edinburgh in, in Edinburgh uh Rob Swindell's Oh, from Manchester. Uh, was uh, yeah, was on the final table the the one Finton one up in Edinburgh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is Rob a school teacher? He is. He is yeah, yes, that's him. Yes, okay. Is, yeah. Would you believe I was? And this is the weirdest thing ever. I was only thinking of I don't know Rob at all, and he came into my mind today, and I am not. Joking. You are shitting me. That's over insane. A hand, yeah, it was over a hand. I that is the weirdest thing ever. So if Rob is listening, right? I. I warmest of regards to you Rob I, I, I haven't seen him since I don't remember meeting him since but he was a real gentleman well, uh, and Rob, uh, Rob has had uh, yeah Rob um, Rob's been in and out certainly during lockdown playing APAT events but he's had some some really decent successes uh, online sure, sure, um, some, sure. some de really deep which was it Sunday Millions he, Sunday um, Million yeah he had a very deep yeah, run yeah. six figure didn't he have a six figure score ninety hundred thousand yeah, dollars yeah. uh, good lad lives in Manchester with his wife Laura and their kids, his only fault being he's a Man City fan, because oh, I'm a Liverpool fan and we're sort of anti-Man City fans at the moment, but uh, we, we let him off with that, I think. Uh, that's, that's, that's a weird one. We're thinking of Rob Swindell's today. That was that weird. Is. And I, you know what I was thinking of actually a hand he played? Isn't that crazy? It just come he finished yeah he finished eighth yeah um, it was about yeah, he played yeah. a, like he I remember he was disgusted after he played the hand he I, I I'm pretty sure he was the one with the king queen now it could be confusing the hand but he king queen and he just it, it just went off script completely oh he has moved it's it's interesting. Has moved. Yeah, no, yeah. well it, well it, <laughs> it's interesting because if you look if you go on his Hendon mob and you see that cash from Edinburgh his two caches before that were both APAT events and his two caches after that were both APAT events so yeah he's he's an APAT through and through is Rob so. you wouldn't you would you would not know this and I'm not even sure I can recall names but uh players who have made an APAT final table live, right? So it's not easy to make the final table of any live event that's a multi-day event uh, that have gone on to win big events. So uh, Liz Borey, uh, Liv Borey, Jesus, Liz Borey, uh, Liv, uh, James Mitchell, who won the Irish Open, uh, final table in an he APAT beat, event. He beat, my, he beat one of my best friends, uh, Paul Cookie Jar. Got it, okay. Uh, Heads up. Paul, Paul outplayed him totally. James <laughs> well, to be Paul, honest, Paul was trying to do a deal with him, but James wouldn't do the deal because <laughs> there's too many other people interested in our chairs or whatever. So, uh, yeah, no, that's I, I was, I was there. I was there. Oh, fantastic. So, I mean, for James to win that, incredible. I, I played in a, a home game with James uh, on many occasions here in London, the Dave Potts home game, very famously, uh, all sorts of filthy games being played, people just having a laugh. And it doesn't surprise me that James didn't do the deal. Uh, but he won that, Roberto Romanello. I mean, there's loads of them. There's tens of players that have actually, you know, final table in APAT and won a World Poker Tour, a World Series of Poker Bracelet, or whatever it might be. Uh, it's, uh, it's really quite good so lee listen give us a quick update on where we are with the poker yeah so we've we have in the background been i mean it's been kind of in an in and out kind of thing the uh the no limit holds um main event we're down to 24 runners in that the players are just uh due to go on a break at five to the hour actually You'll sweet, see just sweet. Up on your screen now so 24 players left in that we're paying top 17 and we're bringing 16 back for the day two tomorrow so that's starting to get down to the to the kind of uh, what the, what was it Fergie used to call it squeaky bum time isn't squeaky it squeaky bum to get time to that point and yeah in that uh, in that one the PLO uh, twenty five players left in that we're paying top eleven and I say we'll be bringing fourteen back um, for that tomorrow so we won't hit the money tonight in that one um, so a little way to go in that and the uh, the turbo is uh, is going along uh, going along nicely ended up with seventy three runners in that 
and uh, we've got uh, in the money already with that. So we're down to um, down to eight um, in that one. Dean Pearson still going strong in in that uh, second place at the moment. Fantastic. Thanks, Lee. And remember, guys, you're not just playing for the cash tonight. If you're in the uh, uh, either of the two main events running, you've got the eight medals as well. So gold, silver and bronze for the top three uh, through tomorrow evening. We will be awarding those. We've got some more stuff coming through the uh, chat box. So uh, another old mate of yours, uh, I think, here. Uh, Finton. So we've got Pat Walsh uh, watching on. It says Finton oh, is the, the yeah. godfather of poker in the West of yes. Ireland. I, I feel a bit uh, heartbroken there. I thought that was me, but evidently not. Uh, joking. Finton is the godfather of poker in the West of Ireland. Forever the gentleman, always entertaining. Be very careful if you call him. And I, <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, absolutely get that. Hiya, great, great guy. <laughs> Uh, good, nice to see the lads in. You know, if you're out there and you know Finton, uh, do drop us uh, a comment here and we'll uh, we'll have a chat about it on on uh, the stream. Uh, Peter Wigglesworth comes back in. Yeah, the UK UK IPT was mint. I played Newcastle, Edinburgh, London, and the best one was Galway. So that's that's quite a thing because Pete has played quite a few of these events. Danny Strange has uh, joined in as well. And uh, Lee, I, I I hate to see it, but uh, we do have a sports related uh, comment here. So let me get this oh. out. So uh, this comes from Mr. Forty, of course. How do you feel, Des, about the Liverpool robbery in Wolverhampton? Uh, well, before I read the rest of that, I'm just going to tell him exactly how I felt. It feels like yesterday and today has been the most intense two sporting events that I've watched in quite some time. I watched the Liverpool Wolves game on a stream on my knee uh, with my daughter on my other knee. We were watching it together. Liverpool, of course, scored a winner in the 94th uh, minute. How did I feel? I felt bloody good, Steve. Bloody good, my friend. Uh, so when Liverpool stole three points, not really, not really. They didn't really steal them, but I'll have them. Uh, when Wolves should have had a foul with 20 seconds, but I didn't see that. Didn't see it at all. Uh, but Liverpool got a dirty goal. It was a great goal. Divock Origi. He only scores big goals. Big goals late on in games. Uh, I was at Villa Park last Wednesday. So Steve was bringing his daughter. And I'm going to say Heather. Holly, help me here, Lee. Hannah. I genuinely it's Hannah. can't remember. I know Hannah. it's Hannah. It's Hannah. It is Hannah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last Wednesday. So Steve and Hannah went to Villa Park last Wednesday uh, when Grealish returned to Villa. City won pretty comfortably in the end there. Uh, and it seems that Jack got a bit of booing from the crowd. But I'm not surprised. I mean, that's football today. Yeah. There are so many yeah. people following football today who are totally fickle. Are you into sports, Fintan? I mean, I can't imagine being a West of Ireland man. You're not. I, I tell you what, I'm totally into the premiership in the yeah. last few years. Yeah, it's, who, who, it's absolutely incredible. They're, who are they're you just, calling for? Well, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say that my loyalties have switched over the decades. I like I started. What? As, what? <laughs> I started as a Leeds fan in the mid 70s. <laughs> uh, and then and then uh, I lived in London in the late 80s. And I used to go to Cold Blow Lane, which was the home of Millwall. Yeah, and uh, the den, and then yeah, in the no. 90s, the late 90s, uh, I started and still am supporting Newcastle, so that, uh, that's that's where I'm at at the moment. You that's know? the great oh, hope. Following, following the money, There's he's following the money. Yeah, he's <laughs> a fair weather yeah. fan, Lee. Fair weather fan. What, what I would say is, we, we've got about we've got Finton for about another five minutes or so. Okay. So if you've got any other questions you quickly want to get, get them in the in. chat, um, get them in, and we'll try and fire them off in the next five minutes or so. Um, but uh, hopefully, um, you know, we'll be able. This won't be uh, the last time we can get Finton on the show, and he'll come back on at some point. But Fantastic. we've got about another five minutes with with uh, with Finton tonight. So if you've got Absolutely any more questions lovely. you want to fire in, go well, for I, it. I, I've got another one, um, Lee. Uh, match poker, Finton. So we talked about Patrick Nally a little while ago. He's put a lot of sort of resource, time, energy into creating this match poker product, which is very skill based. A uh, little bit of a departure for general poker players or regular poker players in terms of the way the game runs out you've already said great fun love it so he's yeah. now got his online platform put together do you think does he have a chance of getting this game played on a wider basis um a chance certainly uh yeah of course of course he has a chance he he's been doing this a while and he's totally committed and he's a smart guy he's a he's a he's a determined guy so you know, but he's up against it. You know, he really yeah. is because, um, you know, like the, you know, the, the dominant, the, like it's no limit. Hold them. Multi tournaments are just so dominant. Like, you know, 
and like to you know to for players to get players to move across you know it's not gonna it's not gonna be an easy an, an easy ask you know but i mean team events it's all like the thing what he has what i love about it is is it's a team event format and that's what i love i mean the team events in poker are just fantastic so right crack. they're yeah. just like absolute maximum banter and crack like you know and if you can perfect that like if you can have a if you can have a a structure and you know what i mean you know kind of a system where you can you know perfect that well, then definitely, I think he's going to be hugely successful, like, you know. Yeah, so he's certainly got a shot at it. And he's 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 got approval from Sport Accord. So this is an official sport. At some point in the future, it could be part of the Olympics, should, you know, lots of things align. Um, but interestingly, uh, you know, he's talking about this is a game you could teach to kids, right? Because there are a lot of parallels between poker and just life and making decisions and seeing outcomes and thinking and planning and all of that stuff. What What do you think about possibly teaching poker to kids um you know I, be it the skill based or yeah i why why not like well, like it's absolutely i mean it's it's hugely beneficial like i mean even like the, you know even learning a new a new thing is is good for the brain right yeah. but poker has so many attributes that are positive like as you say decision making problem solving i, I mean it's just is it, and like, there's no limit. There's no cap on it. Like, it's just there's levels of and layers, and you know, I definitely hugely beneficial. Fantastic. And I I heard they do teach it in 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 certain schools. Maybe I'm confused. Maybe I'm getting mixed up now. Maybe it's trading companies who who have you know uh, games as part of their day, like or whatever, you know. But um, maybe some some of the universities, I don't know, in the states or whatever. Do 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 have a poker tournament on the on the curriculum? I'm not sure. Maybe someone can confirm yeah. that. But yeah, definitely. I'd love to see it. I have to say, I mean, when you see what kids are playing today, you know, Minecraft, so lots of creative games out there that kids are playing, but they are playing them yeah. on devices. And, um, you know, it, it'd be lovely to to see uh, more kids playing card games, um, they're just more down to earth. And there's a hell of a lot to be learned from them. Uh, so, Fintan, I guess the last question that I would ask, given the timeline, um, what do you think is next for you after the Irish poker tour and I know you work outside of poker so you've got a full sort of you know Monday to Friday as it were and probably beyond that too but what do you think is the next thing for Finton sort of you know once the Irish poker tour is, is complete yeah well I'm enjoying things at the moment uh I'm really getting a buzz out of the tour being kind of reinvented and maybe maybe an Irish poker tour international stop maybe Melbourne or oh, Vegas sweet. somewhere sweet. like that sweet yeah yeah, Sweet. hopefully, hopefully. Not not Let's Aspers, in, not Aspers in Newcastle then with those those Newcastle lads. Ah, uh, that yeah, <laughs> that'd be a good one. That would be a good one. Let me tell you. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Well, listen. And, and the fi final thing, just final thing from me, Finton, quickly is for anybody that wants to play the tour. Um, where's the best place to go yeah. to? What, what what's yeah? How can yeah. they go about uh, well, getting involved? Well, we're all over uh, Facebook and Twitter. Irish Poker Tour. It's pretty easy to find. Or there's actually a, a website, pokerevents.ie. Yeah. Uh, but I would say, like, the, the, our social media channels are always updated, and we do we do answer if you want a question or anything. And again, I said it earlier in the show, I have no problem someone re reaching out to me uh, by WhatsApp or text or whatever. I'm pretty happy to answer any questions. Super. Super. Cool. Well, listen, Finton, I'm going to leave you with a, a, a memory here. This is coming yeah. from Billy Johnston, a long term uh, ah, a Billy, yeah. Billy, a lovely guy. Uh, best Top memory man. of Finton, he says, uh, sitting side by side in a cash game, both absolutely smashed. Uh, Finton leans over to me and says, Billy, you really are shite, aren't you? Lol. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, I, I withdraw everything, all of them are next. I am so sorry. No, it's quite, a, quite one, accurate. Billy. We've seen Billy play. You're spot on, spot on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time uh, this evening, Fenton. It's been an absolute pleasure. And, uh, you know, hopefully our pads will cross much more often now that we've had really? that first face-to-face. -face. Yeah. It was really good talking to you. Thanks for having me, guys. All the best. You're welcome. Brilliant. Cheers, Super. Fenton. Thanks, Fenton. Take care. So Fenton's going to leave us, guys, and we will get on with the uh, the business of securing day two places in our main events. I enjoy that, Lee. 
Nice yeah, bloke. Yeah, he's good. Well, yeah, really, really nice guy. Um, and it's always nice when you've got someone on the show that, that's properly passionate about oh, the poker yeah. and uh, it's and, and can talk about it. It's all, it's all good. Now, I think a few people I've seen in the chat have been maybe having uh, one or two issues with party poker, uh, kind of in and in and outs and stuff. But I think it's resolved. It it hasn't looked to have frozen or anything at any point on uh, on what I've the the tables I've had up on screen. But that's not to say um, others haven't been having issues because I know um, there was obviously lots of problems last Sunday, and they've rolled out a brand new uh, update. As you can see uh, from what's on the screen now, this is the uh, this is the new table layout uh des i don't know how much you do, you've seen of this well since, uh, i haven't so i haven't played it i haven't played it um i have to to be perfectly honest um i get that uh you know uh, there are always reasons to change things we don't always understand you know every sort of a bit of reasoning behind that but nonetheless they have made the changes um i also understand that at first glance these changes are always always uh, you know never sweet uh, it takes time to get re reused to things. So I am tempted to say, let's give it a week or two just to see what the look and feel is like. I don't understand why, uh, you know, sit here buttons have been removed if sit here sort of options have been removed. Maybe we just can't find them yet. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'll always slightly be concerned if good functionality has been removed. Um, but I'd be tempted to say, you know, let's give it a, a week or two, see how it goes. Of course, APAT doesn't have any influence whatsoever in terms of that type of decision making. So like the rest of you guys, we're sat here seeing it pretty much for the first time and having to, you yeah. know, deal with it. But uh, we do know there are some really good poker people at party. Uh, they'll want to make changes for the right reasons. So, um, you know, while I think we should be patient around that. Uh, I guess, you know, Lee and I, Tom, Matt, we continue to be frustrated around any issues that you're experiencing, you know, in terms of your play. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's no easy response to that. We said, uh, you know, we were sorry for the experience that we're having on our behalf last week. We won't continue to say that every week. Uh, but at the end of the day, guys, you know, you're going to vote with your, with your cash, right? And uh, we would never ask you to do anything other than that. Yeah. I think the um, I think that some of the table uh, table changes. Um, it, it's actually it isn't as big a big a step as people might actually actually realise. I mean, a lot of people have commented that it's, it looks very similar to 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 what Gigi uh, have got in the way of a table layout. And yeah, I, I guess it is. But I think Gigi have really moved the moved things forward on on kind of that look and feel uh, at, at the tables. Um, ch the chat has gone from the uh, from the uh, the desktop um, client. But a lot of people have been playing on mobiles and tablets for a long time now where there's never been any chat. So it's kind of a, well, it's just a, whether it's a progression or not, I, I don't know. I think I think it takes away a little bit from the kind of the social element of it. But a lot of people will tell you that they have their chat switched off because of the people that abuse it. So I guess inevitably that's the way it's, it's, it's just going to go. I think at the moment they've got a little bit more space around the table than perhaps they they need um the layout we've got on the screen there is is kind of a bespoke version that um that i've created so the bottom two I like boxes that. i like that very yeah, good yeah the, the bottom two boxes wouldn't normally um be there for obviously if you're if you're playing you've got your um you you've, you've got your uh, decisions in the bottom right and the bottom left is basically just a sit out or casino or sports betting um so it feels like there's there is still a little bit of space there for them to maybe get a little bit more of that lobby information onto the table layout in the first place um so i think it might develop a little bit i don't think this will be the uh, the final you know the final version but um yeah i think uh, as you say des we've just got to you've got to go with it a little bit and um and appreciate that it's you know, hopefully moving in in the right direction i think i think it's a cleaner feel i think it looks it looks nicer yeah i'd like a, uh, a thinner definitely. rail myself uh, the green looks a bit i'm not sure um so i i could definitely but you know a lot of that stuff is pure uh, you know, it's 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 individual taste and and stuff like that. But features, as I said, if if certain features have been dropped, um, then I, I, you know, I'm I'm less I'm less comfortable with that. But who knows? But the so but the, um, the, the maybe yeah. But, but so there's a few things. The sit here thing. Um, the fact is that you are now always sat in the in the bottom central chair. Yeah. Um. So where where Mr. Rudling Smith is currently sat is if you're playing, that's always your your 
you know, your position now. It doesn't matter whether you're playing a six handed, seven handed, eight handed. It doesn't matter. Yeah. That's 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 the position. But what if I, what if I, I don't want to sit there, Lee? I, well, I want to. I would always, but I would always have my setting set to be in that position anyway. So I don't know where the party have looked at it and gone. Well, actually, the vast majority of people do sit there anyway. Um, because if you're play, playing more than one table, it's actually quite useful for you to be always be in the same spot. Now, you might not like that spot. You might actually yeah. prefer to be, you know, one to the right, or that's where you're. But ultimately, that's something you'll fairly easily, you know, get used to in the fact that that's where you that's where you are. I think on a I think on the uh, mobile app, I think that's fairly much a standard thing as well. It's you're always in the same spot. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see. Um, I mean, there are a couple of things that I don't. I, I I don't like I I don't like the fact that there's no there's no clock or um or kind of level you know how long left on the level on the table itself yeah. um there used to be I think a little bit yeah. more information in the top bar that kind of thing um but yeah. again that I don't think that's a difficult thing for them to add you know when when the time comes so yeah that's a that's a that's a very good call um Lee I'll tell you what I do like what I do like is that the uh, the show has gone pretty smoothly this evening from a tech point of view. I'm talking about our little stream. Uh, that's pleasing after uh, two. Yeah, I've only had one. I had, had one little, um, yeah, one little uh, reboot of the, uh, of the the tables, but that was, uh, that was all, all there's been so far. And that's we're going good. quite nicely. We're down to 20, we're down to 22. So we're only five off the money in the, uh, in the main event. So hit the guarantee in that, just missed the guarantee in the PLO, but there's going to be a good, uh, good value in, uh, in that for, uh, for somebody. And um, prize pools tonight, haven't really talked about it. Um, the No Limit Hold'em is going to be first prize tonight of uh, just over $1,300. And uh, the PLO PLO winner will be uh, just over $1,100. So um, Lovely. But plus, obviously, uh, the APAP medals for this week, which you yeah. just need to claim from us if you're if you can. Obviously, day two will go tomorrow. And as I said earlier on, if you were late coming into the show, um, what, for whatever reason, it's been an eight o'clock and a nine o'clock start this this month. Uh, normally, we're seven and seven o'clock and eight o'clock. So that does mean tomorrow's day twos are starting at eight o'clock and nine o'clock as well. So um, that that was already programmed oh, in. And once oh, people, oh, oh well, Lee, 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 eight o'clock tomorrow. I've got a meeting at eight o'clock tomorrow. That's interesting timing. So we might need to either start. Oh, maybe we start the stream a little bit early, and uh, I I don't know. We'll, we'll do. We'll, we'll figure we'll, that we'll, out. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. out. We'll either we'll either start the stream early, and I can uh, I can fly solo for a bit, or we'll just say well we'll just hang fire uh, until you're clear, and we'll we'll go on from from nine ish yeah. or something like that, and do a little bit. Or yeah, we we'll say we'll we'll yeah, work it out. We'll see figure it out. We'll we'll, we'll we'll yeah we'll, we'll figure out a a solution for for that one. Uh, whilst we're talking timings and other bits and pieces, let me just give you a run because we're into December, Mister Duffy. I don't know whether you realise, but um, <sighs> trees but, up and um, everything. Yeah, I realise. Yeah, you know. Santa Claus is on his way and all of that. <laughs> He's not coming uh, to me. No way. Yeah. So um, just to let you guys know what the plan is for December. So um, basically from tomorrow, so the 6th, we'll have another two weeks of leaderboard ladders. So that'll basically run till the week ending of the, uh, the 12th and the week ending of the 19th. I think we'll be doing shows, both of those, the 12th and the 19th, hopefully. Fingers crossed, all, all working. And then we will basically freeze leaderboard ladders for a couple of weeks over the over the christmas and new year period so we won't do the, the the leaderboards the tournaments will still run so if you want to play them as you normally do you're more than welcome to do that but we will we will freeze whatever step you're on for a couple of weeks until the new year Sweet. and then obviously we'll, we'll let you know in the new year what the what the plan is but that's just to, so you know those that want to carry I, I i know there's some of you christmas day you're playing whatever tournaments we've got on i fully appreciate that um uh, whatever you've whatever you've told the relatives that you need it's important you play this tournament that's that's fine um but yeah we'll uh we'll just give it a break for for those two weeks so uh that'll be that'll be fine lovely just going uh, back to the chat box lee uh rob reynolds says cheers guys enjoyable show thank you rob uh steve says uh yes daughter is hannah 17th birthday soon she loved the game on wednesday night i love to see villa hammer at liverpool next weekend well i shall be at that game going back to uh, Anfield for the return of Stevie G. Uh, I'm not looking out for that result, though, I have to say. Uh, Emla Long is watching him with us. Holy Foldy says, enjoyed that interview. Yeah, I did. It was nice. It was nice talking to him, I have to say. Uh, the show has flown by. Uh, Steve says, what is happening with the poker school? So Steve was looking for some 
uh, advice on poker training, video poker training and stuff like that during the week. And I said, watch this space. And I think it is fair to say we are working on something that could be quite interesting on the video poker school uh, front. But you will have to watch this space for a little while longer. It'd be nice to be able to say something about that before Christmas, but we're just going to have to She's going to have to wait. Uh, the, the problem is, is just it's take it's the delays. I mean, I've I've posted the flip chart up to Des so he can do his <laughs> videos, but it's not arrived yet. So um, as soon as it gets there and he can get his marker, his marker pens out, then we'll be uh, we'll be good to go. Yeah? Right. So I, I could start the video like, right, guys. So you have ace jack in mid position. Here's how you play it. Now, Lee, I couldn't possibly get that wrong, could I? I mean, nobody knows oh, how to no, play no, ace jack no, in middle only, position. There's only one way. There's only one way to do it, uh, so it's fine. Yeah, it won't, won't be a problem at all. Yeah, it'll I've be good. It. I've got it. I'm all yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're done. That's the only way to. <laughs> uh, right. So, uh, so there's a little more talk about the uh, the client, the new client. I'm not going to talk about that because uh, we've done it basically. Uh, and yeah, basically everybody's getting, uh, right. Can we, can we move on to the big, the big, the big story of the day? Can we just oh, get the, on with this? Cause we could have before, done, we could have filled the whole show with this before yeah. you've done that. No, I've got an offer for you here. Steve says, uh, okay. I, I am free tomorrow night to work with leave required. I like that. Can we move on to the big news story of the day? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was a great offer. <laughs> Let's get Steve on the show. Better our viewership doubles. Oh, Come hang on, on hang it. on, hang on. Here we go. If you click on the box top left, it opens with more info. Hello. Hey. Does it? Oh, look at that. Who knew? Oh, hello, Did you not people. even know that? You can click on that box. How do you close the bloody thing down once you've clicked on it? I'm oh, you gonna... just click anywhere else on the screen. Oh, look at that. Well, that's good. That was a ton of info there. That's cool. That's cool. So, I mean, but more importantly, look what it does when you get close to the bubble. It puts <laughs> bubbles. I mean, someone spent a lot of time thinking about this, haven't they? Really, <laughs> too much time. But genuine, but genuinely, Mark, that's that is that is life changing for some people. So, um, so that little the little info up in the top left hand uh, corner there, if you um if you click on it, uh, you get all of that. I mean, it's it, obviously it's you can't leave it open like that. But if you need a quick glance, you can have a quick glance and then click anywhere else on the table and it goes away. Superb. Well, I say well. Yeah, every day's a school day, isn't it? Right, so, Lee, what do we have to talk about today? Well, let's just quickly watch uh, this. Richard Rudling oh. Smith is all is all in, and Gavin Reed's got a decision to make. He's got chips behind us, Gavin. So, uh, and we said we are down to 20, so we're only three off the money now. Um, so, right. no, Thanks. okay, so let's talk about, now, I I knew, obviously, knew it was a show tonight, and I, 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 I'm not a massive Formula One fan. Oh, but Jesus I made the Lee. effort Jesus, today. Jesus. I made the effort today. I thought, you know what? I, I was doing a few other bits in the office, but I thought, right, I'm going to stick the Formula One on. I've, I've on been telling you. Well. Haven't I been telling you? Um, because, I, you know, I, I'm thinking, oh, it's going to, it'll be 50 laps of nonstop racing. I, I, I can't <laughs> wait. What the bloody hell went on? It was intense, evening. wasn't it? It was absolutely in Sa intense. In Saudi Arabia. We, I mean, you're a big Formula One fan, so talk us through it. <sighs> Okay, I can only summarise as is follows. We have two uh, uh, heroes in this story of Formula One this season. Uh, the two heroes could be either the two teams, so Red Bull and Mercedes. Uh, Mercedes have won the last seven years in a row, so they're almost impenetrable as a team at the moment. Red Bull, just before we cross over from this hybrid period into a new period of Formula One starting next year, new rules, new car designs, Nobody knows for sure what will happen. Red Bull have somehow managed to find a super competitive car. They were particularly competitive earlier on in the season, albeit they've now lost the last three races in a row. So you've got two teams and then you've got two individual drivers. You've got Verstappen, the pretender, highly talented, has won a lot of races this year, but he hasn't yet secured a world title. And Hamilton, of course, the local favourite, who's going for his seventh world title. So if he wins this title... Is it not uh, eight? Is it no, not eight? I think he's going for his seventh. I thought it was seventh. It could be eight. No, I thought he matched. I thought. I think it's eight. I think he oh, matched Oh, he could seven. be. It may be, seven maybe it is. Was, so yeah, Schumacher yeah. has seven then. Yeah. So he's going for his eight in, in any yeah, event. Yeah, he's got, he's, he's got seven. He's going for eight. Yeah, he's yeah, he's going, going for 
the title that will make him the most decorated sort of uh, Formula One driver of all time, right, in history. So the stakes are quite large. And I think what is really interesting is uh, Hamilton has experience on his side. He knows you can't win a thing in any individual race. So he's a little more cautious. Um, you've got Verstappen, who is willing to do anything to win at each individual race. And they have just clashed time after time throughout the season. Uh, today was insane. So we've got two races left. Uh, Hamilton, favourite for this race, uh, should he win, would expect it to be neck and neck with uh, Verstappen for the final race next week. Um, however, if Verstappen won uh, and Hamilton finished, you know, a little further down, Verstappen could have actually won the world title today. And we ended up uh, on a new uh, track in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, uh, where it's super fast, it's a street circuit, so there are walls everywhere, essentially, um, with a race that just saw several virtual safety cars, a couple of real safety cars. We had two restarts, we had penalties issued, we had numerous crashes, we had debris all over the track for almost every lap of the race, and we ended up in a situation whereby Verstappen was instructed by the the, uh, the, you know, the, the, the organiser to pull over and let Hamilton through. Hamilton wasn't given that message in time, and he's only ended up running into the back of Verstappen. Uh, well, mi- mi- it's just mi- an, mi- insane. Michelle's, Michelle's in the because I hadn't actually picked up on what the final post-race stewards' decision haven't was. Seen haven't seen it yet. Haven't seen it yet. Right, well, read the chat, because Michelle has all the, all the latest news uh, on what's gone on. So, uh, okay, so Max has been given a 10-second time penalty after the race, so I assume that is for today's race. Not He's not going to take he'd that or, Yes, but he'd, he'd already been given a five, yeah. but, it's a t- but that wouldn't make any difference to his finishing position anyway. So in a way, it's okay. a bit of a throwaway. Plus he's given a two-point yeah. penalty, which to be honest, um, is is it only impacts one, uh, albeit important spot so they actually finished the race today level on points so after uh, uh, however many races this season they both go into next week's final race on the same points total so uh, because Verstappen had won more races than Hamilton in the season that meant that should they both have failed score points next weekend uh Verstappen would have been mid world champion. And of course, in Formula One, on at least two occasions previously, uh, there have been, you know, critical leader crashes in the last race of the calendar, which have ended up determining the world title. So Max could have ran into Lewis next weekend, neither would have scored points, and Max would have been world champion. But if he's been given a two point penalty, he can't do that any longer. So Lewis could do it to him, but Lewis wouldn't do that. Interesting. <coughs> so, um, it'd be interesting to know what, obviously, Michelle says, yeah, Formula One, huge fan. So, obviously, knows, knows the stuff and would have watched the race. So, I'm curious to know what your take, because, again, I, I watch it as a bit of a, you know, the the incident where Hamilton went up the back of Max uh, uh, Verstappen, what, what's your take on it? Was it, who who was at fault? Clearly, the, the stewards feel that, that Verstappen was, because they've obviously punished him for it. But actually, you know, in in any normal walk of um of, of life, um, if you if you went at the back of somebody in the street, even if they were braking, you, you're you're at fault. Um, I think for you know for, for it. So how does it work? I think there's levels. There's levels to this one. It's very deep. I think there was a lot of thinking going on. So effectively, uh, Verstappen was instructed to slow down and let Hamilton pass. So if we ignore the fact that Hamilton hadn't received the same message at that precise time that it occurred then you'd, you'd look at the incident and clearly Verstappen has slowed down. Um, the telemetry might suggest that he speeded up and then slowed down again. That seems to be what Mercedes are saying. I guess that was evidenced in in this outcome here. Um, but for me, I think, uh, you know, Hamilton's driving up behind him and he's probably going, what the hell is going on here? So it'd be very easy to assume that Hamilton has either thought, why is he slowing down? Is there suddenly a yellow flag somewhere that I haven't seen? And therefore, if I pass him, am I going to get a penalty? So that could be one potential Hamilton thought process. Did I miss something? Well, I mean, why is he slowing down? Understanding that Hamilton hadn't received the message. Uh, the second uh, uh, relates to the uh, the DRS line, which was maybe, I don't know, 
400 metres, 300 metres down the track, which basically meant that if Hamilton passed Verstappen at that exact point, Verstappen would have been able to use DRS uh, for the next phase of that lap, which would have given him an instant opportunity to get pa- back past Hamilton. So it could have been gamesman uh, ship from Verstappen in slowing down there and really forcing Hamilton to pass him to give him a chance to repass him. Uh, or it could just have been a case of Hamilton thinking, have I missed something? So, uh, you know, I don't know what the answer to that is, but the stewards well, must have been. Well, t- tell me, tell me this, Des, the, um, cause obviously further on after that, then they, he was given clear instructions to give the place back. So obviously he gained the place by going off the track. Um, and so had to give the place. So why in formula one, do they not insist upon, right? Okay you've got to give the place back and actually you have to give the place back between turn 23 and 24 where there's none of this nonsense about DRS and this, that, and the other. Why is the driver allowed to choose where they, because obviously when he did eventually give the place back, he did it in a place where he could very quickly, once he'd overtake, yeah. just undercut and went and go, got it go, back. Go so, for it again. You know, it was a bit of a bit of a farce. But surely uh, there should be some rule which yeah. says, right, it has to be done here. And the, the reality is there was a position switch between them a few laps earlier, which resulted in exactly that outcome. So Hamilton passed Verstappen and Verstappen instantly repassed him because of that. So I think the reason that there is some, uh, you know, decision making left to the drivers there is that despite the fact there didn't seem to be anybody else on that stretch of track, generally speaking, at a Formula One race, there could be a bunch of back markers anywhere on track. Right. So safety has got to be part of the decision making process in terms of where should I let him repass me um, and you know part of that decision could well have been well Verstappen has got a penalty and he's trying to take advantage of the penalty despite the fact that he's got a penalty he's trying to take advantage of this situation and that perhaps is why he's ended up being penalized multiple times because he got a five second penalty in the race he got uh, told to give the position back and he's got a 10 second penalty and he's got a points deduction I mean it's got to be more than a single crime there right I'll, I'll tell you the other thing watching it um obviously it, it felt like it was organized chaos not just from some of the drivers but from the race race control the the the, the guys the, the people that are running it and and I was watching those um those poor stewards running on to clear the track whilst the cars are going <laughs> around I know they slow down but they're going around. Oh. if you're being told in your headphones by race control that clearly have got this race out of control it's all right. You got twenty seconds before another car turns up. I'm not sure whether I'm trusting them or not. Yeah. As I as I'm nipping out to pick up a, a little bit of carbon fiber before as a car comes around at hundred miles an hour. Um, I'm yeah. just I'm Very, just uh, decent, I'm just <laughs> yeah. I'm look. I'm just surprised they didn't have a pool of lady stewards that they weren't sending out to uh, pick up that carbon fiber. Uh, you know, given well, that particular yes, location, it, it, I have to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you uh, know, that's, off, that's you very, off you go, off you go, Farah, go for it. Yeah, we are down to uh, to 18 runners, so we are uh, very much hand for hand at the moment. Uh, one more to go and uh, we will be in the money. Kim uh, Kim Callow is currently chip leader uh, at the moment. Uh, Andres Achilles is still uh, going in this. I'm trying to see whether there's anybody else that I recognise. Uh, Daniela from Germany is still in there. Gary Young. Uh, Mickey Peterson uh, is the short stack. So listen, uh, Lee. There's a there's a there's a ton of discussion on the uh, the Formula One. So we we can't move off of this just yet. So uh, Michelle says I'm a huge fan. So we've definitely got that. Uh, Max has been given ten seconds. So we 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 got the pen. Uh, Post race Stewart's decision. Uh, Steve says Max was brake testing Lewis. Well, I know that was Lewis's initial reaction, but I'm not absolutely sure that that made any sense because in theory, if that's what he was trying to do. There was a ton of track for Lewis just to drive around him. <laughs> you know, he's Lewis is probably kicking himself. I'm not well when it, what's really funny, when I first saw it when he slowed down though, Des, I looked and just went, there didn't seem to be a lot of he wasn't it's not like he moved over to the right to make it very obvious you can get past. He was kind of uh, I'm in the middle yeah. of the track, but I slowed yeah. down. So you you need to swing around me here. And I'm thinking, well, he could have, you know, and it and it wasn't a huge amount of room. It is a street circuit after all, which I think are normally a narrower tracks yeah. than, than a, you know, a usual Grand Prix track, yeah? I think, look, I, you know, I said it to Sean at the start of the race. I said if if uh, if Hamilton gets into a position to overtake... I'm just going to quickly jump because I think, yeah, I think we might uh, we might have a... 
Oof. Uh, there's all in and calls on this other table, and it's uh, it's it's tasty. I'm not sure whether that's uh, that's my party poker's frozen or what, but I think that's going to possibly mean um, we we might have lost um, lost somebody there. I think it my, might be my party's frozen unless it's frozen for everybody. Um, well, Gary and Mickey are all in there. Yeah, so I'm not gonna. I'm not sure, but uh, it certainly seems to have uh, have frozen up again. But it might I need, be. It I need might to be know. Me or not. I need to know whether Gary's yeah. club came on the end there, Lee. Oh, it might be. It might be me, Daisy. You might have to flick out of that screen for a minute, and uh, we'll, okay, we we'll see. That. We can do that. What it is, yeah. whilst you're still chatting through the Formula One, go. but that looked like that could that could be the bubble burst. I will find out in a second. Yeah. So I did say to um, Sean at the start of the race, uh, you know. Should Hamilton get the opportunity to overtake Verstappen, uh, he he won't let it he won't let it happen. He'll do absolutely everything within his power to stop uh, Hamilton overtaking. You know for obvious reasons, and he is that type of driver. So I think he's uh, he's not looking to injure Hamilton or whatever, but he'll do almost anything. I, I've never seen such a will to survive uh, in any sportsman. I have to, I have to say. Uh, Holdy said, in my opinion, Max could have stayed more right. He was quite centre, then braked. There was a lot of uh, pre-aggro uh, with them. I mean, obviously, there's just a ton of... I mean, Max parked his car on Hamilton's car in Italy earlier on in the season. It was incredible stuff. Uh, Steve says, Max let him uh, overtake, but then overtook Lewis in the next corner. So, yeah, uh, we had instances of that. Uh, Holdy says, situations I've never seen before today in that race. Yeah, I think that was... Fair. I mean, I, I turned to Sean at the end and said, uh, you know, I'd hate to be a writer having to, uh, you know, to write my, my column on that one in the morning because so much happened. I mean, two restarts, three uh, virtual safety cars, two safety cars, countless close incidents between, you know, Hamilton and uh, Verstappen alone. It was a hell of a, an entertaining uh, race and it's got us all looking forward to next weekend. So I think uh, 1 p.m. on Sunday... We go for the final time this season. Yeah, so it's uh, it all comes down to Sunday level. Well, not level points now. Obviously, now two uh, two points uh, yeah. two points different now, isn't it? So but that um, makes uh, you know it, it really doesn't make a tremendous amount of difference. It just removes the uh, opportunity of Max taking uh, Lewis out. Right, that's really all that that does, because first place is twenty five points, second is eighteen, third is fifteen. So the points differences are quite substantial amongst the top three or four places. That uh, two points alone shouldn't really make a difference. Uh, you know, if Max finishes ahead of Lewis, there's every chance he'll win uh, the world title next Sunday. Yeah, I'd have thought so. So yeah, it was uh, it was my uh, my party that froze just at the wrong time as we were yeah. we were doing that. So the bubble did burst. Um, and uh, it was uh, Mickey Peterson that uh, finished in 18th place. And uh, I'm just watching there, um, Kim Callow knock out um, Carla's shot means we are down to 16. And that is going to be, um, that will be the uh, the No Limit Hold'em uh, frozen for the night. Um, so uh, uh, it's not too, not too bad. Uh, pretty much where we would ex expect it to be as it's run an hour, hour later. So Kim Callow will be the chip leader going into, into awesome. tomorrow. Uh, we still got Andrew Sakili, uh, Gary Young, uh, uh, Rich Rudding Smith has has made it through as well. So, um, well you know, done, we'll guys. I'll just uh, see where we're at with the uh, with the PLO uh, now as well. Bring that up. Um, bring a PLO table up. So we're there. We've got fifteen left in that, um, and that is going to play down to fourteen. So basically, we lose one more in the PLO, and uh, and that will be. Uh, be done for the uh, for the night as well. Um, Andrew Jones is still there. Gary Young is still in this one as well, so he's on a on for uh, back uh, for doubling up on his day twos. Billy Johnson is still there. Michelle is currently seventh in um, in chips as well. She's on the other table. Let me see if I can. Michelle's I don't know. Table uh, up there as well. Lee, just as you There's move off Michelle's that previous table, yeah. just as you move off that previous table there, I don't know if you know Billy Johnston, but he's a he's a shy player. That lad. Is he a shy player? Is he really? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's oh, nice we love that's, Billy. That's, that's that's the story he remembers. Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> that was the good one. <laughs> yeah. So the players are yeah playing hand for hand at the moment. So that's the reason why that one's paused and uh, and uh, this one is currently playing out. Um, just see who else we've got. That's pretty much yeah. Oh, and and uh, Richard Rudling Smith is on in this one as well. So potentially Richard and Gary could be doing uh, doubling up on their day Sweet. twos. 
that, that will make be, it interesting. Uh, would be good, yeah, to say the least. Uh, Turbo Knockout is complete as well. So um, once we, to be honest, once this this bubble's done, we'll be done. Uh, winner of that that was Konstantin uh, Schmidt. Um, from Germany, uh, beat Stefan Reisenberger from Austria, heads up with Dean Pearson finishing third. So, uh, well did that go guys. off at the right time, Lee? Yeah, that one did. Yeah, yeah. How odd. I think what happened, I, th I, I think what happened is, I think the guys at party, uh, when they set up our monthly tournaments, probably copied the previous month's ones and brought them forward. And of course, there's been a, a clock change okay. in between the to i'm i'm guessing that might be what it is and all they've just genuinely yeah got their hours got their hours wrong when they've done oh. it um so yeah okay one of those things not the uh not the end of the world um, no 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 by any stretch of the imagination um so steve's asking here lee uh are we on tomorrow as well so yes we are time yeah, is still some, a little to be yeah. confirmed uh steve we'll work so. we'll work out how we're gonna how we're gonna do it yeah um, just look out in the group and and billy says no doubt at all with a big lol we're all having a laugh about that one yeah so um yeah interesting today um i don't know why there wasn't a two o'clock game um of the football there was three games on but for some reason uh, i don't i've got a feeling they didn't want it to clash with the women's fa cup final and none um, of them televised Lee. no yeah exactly so I, th I think it was because the women's um fa cup final was on so there's i, I would imagine the fa wouldn't really want that to clash and have that yeah. as being did a, you a, a thing did you get the opportunity to see the united game haven't seen it yet. No, okay. no, not seen it at all. So, um, but my understanding is that we, um, we looked a different side in the first half, sort of ran out of legs in the second yeah, half. That's what I heard. Um, and, and then Fred scored a, a, a pretty decent goal and yeah. we'll take, we'll take one nil. Um, you look at our games coming up and if he can, if he can build on that, um, you know, you genuinely could see us. We, you know, we, we have the potential to, to go not just unbeaten, but a hundred percent record yeah. through December. There's nothing, yeah. you know, there's nothing in there, which we should be overly worried about, but they're the games at the moment where in the past we've, um, we've struggled with. Um, so I see he, got uh, an all in, got an all in and it's all kicking off on the other table. Let me bring oh, well, up. There's a lot of, a lot of cards on show and it's going to be two players out, which means that's going to be that one wow. done as well. I think, because I think wow, that's wow. going to be, uh, yeah, it is. Um, we're going to lose uh, Alexander Harty and Henry Upper in the same hand there. So that is that pause as well, Mr. Duffy. So we're um, we're done for for, we're done for like the that. evening, but but not done for the week because uh, the two day twos will come back tomorrow. So we won't finish updating the leaderboards until tomorrow night. Uh, that makes perfect sense. Well, listen, before we call it a nightly, I've got to finish off my question. Uh, the, the the two changes that uh, Ralph uh, made to United today were both in the fullback position. So we added. Young legs, as it were. You got D Dallo at right back instead of Wan Bissaka. Uh, and he he brought in Teles at left back. Although Teles played, I think in in well, the no, last he game. Bo both well, no, both played in the last game. Um, so so not his decision, under, maybe. No, so, no, no. Both. It, it was exactly that. It actually was exactly the same team that uh, that Carrick put out against Arsenal. So you you were exactly. comfortable with that? I mean, it makes perfect sense. He's only had a like a, a one or a two hour training session with them he said very yeah well time, i think so. i think the i think the issue is i think um sure has got some serious concussion issues uh from a yeah. head injury a little yeah. while ago which is clearly not right he's been that's been a while now, now hasn't it yeah that's been a it's while. been a few games um wan bissaka i think i mean i've said on the show before i i, I think darlo's a, a better um fullback for attacking and, and what we want moving forward and did very well at ac milan last season went on loan uh wan bissaka is obviously one of the best defensive fullbacks around. However, positionally, he's shocking. Um, and going forward, he's pretty shocking. So it, it might be that, you know, it's decision decided that he's not uh, he's not going to be what they're what we're going to want moving forward. But uh we will, you know, we'll watch this space. But it, it it's interesting how um he the, the what the difference he did make is he played Rashford more up up with Ronaldo and played two up effectively, which allowed us to press higher up the up the pitch. Yeah. But it does make a difference when we're pressing like that. Fernandez wasn't in the game very much. Um well I heard it uh, described as a four two 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 with uh the, the two fullbacks, you know, 
often making that a four in midfield as well. So that's interesting. That's a slightly different approach. Be interesting to see it. Uh, you know, uh, I'm sure they've been on match of the day tonight. So maybe get to see that one tomorrow night or something. Um, but yeah, interesting times. Yes, yes. So it'll be. Uh, we'll we'll see what happens. Um, say it's December's always uh, December's always great because it really is kind of wall to wall football, isn't it? So it's pretty much midweek and weekend uh, for you know for for sort of three or four weeks in, in a row. Lots of games on TV in or in, around the Christmas schedule and everything else. And so uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good couple of weeks. Say so Formula One finishing next uh, next weekend, um, and then uh, a, a lot of football into the into the Christmas break. Um, so lots to look forward to. Fantabulastic. Well, I think, guys, that's it for us uh, tonight. Uh, so we are going to be back tomorrow night. Play will be starting at 8 o'clock uh, and 9 o'clock. So 8 o'clock in the No Limit Hold'em, 9 o'clock in the PLO tomorrow night. Uh, we won't be here for 8. Uh, I don't think uh, we'll confirm that in the Facebook group. Um, but until then, we will say good night and uh, hope you guys have qualified through to tomorrow. Good night's sleep. All right. Cheers, everyone. Thank you.